Hello again, everybody. This is John with BestPriceNutrition.com, flying solo today. Um, today I'm going to go over beta alanine with you guys. Um, we've got a lot of questions about beta alanine. In the past, we've reviewed some supplements that had beta alanine as part of it, but we haven't done a video specifically on beta alanine. And for me, beta alanine is one of my favorite supplements out there, and that really lies in the fact that there's so much research out there documenting how effective it is. It's right up there with creatine in terms of you know studies to validate how effective it is. Um, so starting off, people always ask us, you know, what is beta alanine? And it's, it's, it's used specifically for, it's an amino acid, but it's, it's something that can be synthesized in the liver so your body can make it. So a question we get is, hey, if, if my body can make it, does taking it cause problems with me producing it? No, because most of what we get it from is actually exogenous, if it's from diet. Chicken and turkey are two examples of really good sources of beta alanine. So, so it's just much like creatine. Yes, your body produces it, but also we get it from diet. It's not something where taking an exogenous source of testosterone like steroids is going to stop your body from producing naturally. So no worries there. Um, some of the benefits, uh, in, in, well first why don't we go into how it works. Specifically what it does is it increases carnosine levels. Carnosine is present in the muscle because it has to be there to maintain intracellular pH. So what's going on is, and it's really going to be noticed most when you're using the um, glycolytic or phosphagen systems. Those are your explosive anaerobic systems we commonly think of where you're using fast twitch muscle fibers. So if you're going to run a long distance, you're using your slow twitch muscle fibers. This is more like 100 meter sprints, you know, 5 meter sprints, lifting, anything explosive. What's going on there is your body's using ATP for energy. Your body breaks down ATP and adenosine triphosphate into ADP and lactic acid. Our ability to recycle ADP into ATP where we return that phosphate, creatine plays a role in that. Creatine is what returns the phosphate onto ADP making it ATP again. Then our ability to use the lactic acid as energy. Lactic acid is actually our friend. It's not what causes the burn actually. It's the acid that dissociates from lactic acid that makes you feel the burn and what is going to lower the intracellular pH which is going to cause that you know acidosis while you're working out which is kind of the, the rate limiting factor in these two processes. So the presence of carnosine is what's going to maintain that pH to allow you to continue to work out. And this doesn't just work within a set. It's not like, oh, if I take beta alanine, instead of doing three reps, I could do five reps or ten reps. The acid actually accumulates throughout your workout. That's one of the factors that limits. So you can be more explosive at the end of your workout if you can limit the amount of acid that's building up in your muscles. So um, again, it's in, in carnosine, that what we're talking about here and what beta alanine is increasing, that's a dipeptide. It's beta alanine and histidine. Originally, when a lot of the beta alanine supplements came out, you were seeing that they would have beta alanine and histidine. None of these do. Originally, companies were doing that. Well, we found out that you really don't need the histidine. You've got plenty of it in the body. It's plenty abundant. It's actually the beta alanine that your body needs in order to increase carnosine levels. Um, so that's how it works. Another question we get are, well, what are some of these side effects? Well, we already covered the fact that you don't have to worry about the fact that your body is going to stop producing it because most of it is coming from diet anyways. Um, one thing that you'll notice if you've not taken it or you start using it if you haven't used it for a while is that you know you take the powdered form or the capsule whatever it doesn't matter you're gonna get like a pins and needles type feeling almost like if you've taken niacin before you find tingle in your lips and stuff it goes away pretty quickly and it kinda makes your skin feel warm and you can get a little bit flush and stuff too but that's fine that's a, that's a very normal effect um, some people actually like it they almost feel like it warms them up for their workout um, but if, that, if that gets you going then that's great um, over time, though, as you use it more and more, that tends to subside. Um, so those are mainly the, the side effects, if you will. And I don't really like the term side effects because they're all effects. Side effects is more of a, a, a marketing term. It it's really comes down to how it affects your body. Um, next question we get is how much should we take per day? Most recommendations and most research has been done with 2 to 4 grams per day. Um, obviously, you have to adjust that a little bit if you're a little bit bigger of a guy or a little bit smaller. You know, you go on the low end of that with two grams. You know, smaller being, I'd say, less than 150 pounds. You, know, you could probably get away with like two to three grams. If you're over 150, you probably want to shoot in the three to four gram three to four gram range. That's where most of the research has shown it to be effective, where you're going to reach that critical mass. Um, other questions we get are, you know, what can you stack it with? Well, as we mentioned, creatine plays a role in recycling ADP. That's the adenosine diphosphate. It returns the phosphate back onto it. So by taking creatine and beta alanine, you're really helping with two of the rate limiting factors in glycolysis and uh, yeah, with the phosphagen system. And again, I talk about those two. The phosphagen system, think of it as, as a really, really short burst, your 100% output. So maybe like a five meter sprint or a one rep max, you know, clean and jerk or something like that. Whereas 
the glycolytic system is going to be like a hundred meter sprint, where you run as fast as you can for a hundred meters. So you know you're you're kind of using I don't know probably ninety five percent of your effort. It may be a hundred percent, but your muscles can only have that output for uh, so long of a period of time. So that's where this is really going to shine, and that's where creatine is going to help too, because as you're breaking down ATP into ADP, creatine is going to recycle it. Um, and another effect of creatine, for you know, for those who haven't seen the video on it, is yes, you do gain a little bit of water weight, but the water weight is actually good because that makes the cell more anabolic. It draws water into it, and, and that's going to increase intracellular tension. So there's a lot of benefits and a lot of research to validate creatine. So we could do a whole other video on that, which we've done. And also, we have a really good article up on creatine and beta alanine, how the two go together. It's on our blog. Um, I believe it's called Creatine and Beta Alanine, a match made in heaven with a question mark. So it's uh, a really, really well written because I wrote it, so I think it's well written. But, uh, you know, please feel free to rip it apart if you want. I'm sure somebody will. There's always a contrarian. But um, we did a lot of research for that one to, you know, put it up there. So please take a look at that. Um, as far as how long to take it, you know, again, it's not something that your body's going to shut down production of. It's something that I would probably recommend you take for at least eight weeks to get, you know, a full good benefit from it. Um, but if you like cycling things so that you don't get that in your mind where you're like, that becomes your, no, your new baseline, your new normal. You know, I like to break things up maybe 12, 16 weeks and then give yourself a few weeks off. You know, that, that's certainly fine. Um, but again, you don't have to worry about down regulation. It's, it's something that your body is used to getting from diet, so that's not a problem. Um, examples of supplements, you know, these are all pure beta alanine supplements. This is a powder from Primordial Performance. Um, this here is a capsule form um, from Molecular Nutrition, and you'll see tingle free on here. So, what they're trying to deliver to you is the one of the side effects I talked about is that tingly type feeling. Well, this is, I have not used this one, so I'm not sure, but the idea is that you wouldn't get that tingly effect. Um, and they, they have a pretty, a little bit different of a dosage protocol in here, too. And you'll also see a lot of companies use Carnison. That's the trademark name of beta alanine that one particular company makes. So a lot of companies use that form. This is another powder here from Almax and then another powder from Prima Force. What is nice about beta alanine also is that it's relatively inexpensive, much like creatine. Two of the most effective supplements on the market are actually two of the cheapest, which is always interesting. So you're not going to break the bank taking creatine or beta alanine, especially take it for a long period of time. You know, you typically get a big container of it. Like this is a, this has 250 servings in here, each serving being two grams. So. That's a, it's a pretty good deal. I don't know the price offhand, but um, you can certainly check that out on, on all of these as well. Um, other supplements that you're going to find it in is some pre-workouts put it in there. Now, some of them don't tell you how much is in there because they're using proprietary blends, which always sucks as a consumer. Um, but you'll be able to tell when you kind of get that feeling of that tingling type thing, if you, if you can kind of get an idea of how much is in there. Some of the pre-workouts will tell you how much is in there. So that's nice, but again, you do want to take it a couple times a day. So if you do take a pre-workout that has beta alanine, I'd recommend supplementing an additional serving of it. So you, know, you can make one of these last twice as long as if you're getting it from your pre-workout and then mixing it in somewhere else. That's fine too. Um, can't see any other questions here, so if you guys do have any others, I'm sure some will pop up. Please feel free to post them in the uh, comment section of the video. Also, just post them on our blog. Feel free, I'll go ahead and answer them. Also, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Thank you.